The Optics Laboratory at the Extreme Light Infrastructure Nuclear Physics Center is a national facility provided with cutting-edge technology and operated by top-notch scientists. The laboratory supports the Titanium Sapphire Ultrafast High Power Laser System and external research teams, who need access to the laboratory equipment and the ELI scientist expertise. One of the laboratory instruments is the Horiba Ellipsometer. Spectroscopic ellipsometry is a surface-sensitive, non-destructive and non-intrusive optical metrology technique widely used to determine thin film thickness and optical constants, such as the imaginary refractive index. The ellipsometer is ideal for a wide range of thin film applications, from fields such as semiconductors, solar, optoelectronics, optical and functional coatings, surface chemistry and biotechnology. The Leica microscope is used for optical components inspection and ongoing research in the lab, such as studies of water microjets. Shockwave trains in liquid jets were previously generated only by ablation with femtosecond X-ray lasers. The research conducted here shows that shock trains in water microjets can be also generated using nanosecond green laser pulses with 1 to 10 millijoules energy. A terawatt class femtosecond laser amplifier is acquired from the Avesta company as a modular laser kit. This laser system is intended to perform experiments within the research projects of the lasers system department as well as to the training of the young LIMP researchers on titanium sapphire chirp pulse amplification and femtosecond laser pulses characterization. The femtosecond oscillator is based on Kerr lens self-mode locking. Under the optimal alignment, the laser oscillator is able to generate ultra-short pulses at 800 nanometers with approximately 4 nanojoules pulse energy, 90 MHz repetition rate and about 50 nanometer spectral bandwidth, which corresponds to less than 20 femtoseconds pulse duration. The oscillator is followed by a stretcher, which spreads the pulse in time domain to be further amplified in the regenerative amplifier. Oscillator femtosecond pulses are stretched with a ratio of about 6 picoseconds per nanometer in a stretcher, based on a folded telescope configuration with a concave dielectric mirror and a single diffraction grating. For the femtosecond oscillator protection, a Faraday optical isolator is installed before the input of stretched laser pulses in the regenerative amplifier. Stretched broadband pulses with a vertical linear polarization are injected into the regenerative amplifier through the dielectric film polarizer. The linear optical resonator is formed by two concave end mirrors two folding plane mirrors and two thin film polarizers. After the amplification, the correct pulse is picked by the pulse picker, amplified in a second stage by a two-pass amplifier and finally compressed in the compressor. The compressor compensates the dispersion from the stretcher and from the materials used along the amplification chain and resists at the fluence of the input pulses as mentioned above. The damage threshold of the diffractive gratings can reach up to 0.2 joules per centimeter square for gold gratings and polarized light. Nevertheless, the operation fluence of such gratings is limited to 0.05 to 0.1 joules per centimeter square in order to avoid damage from beam profile in homogeneity, also known as hot spots. The final pulse of the laser system is sent out to the experimental table to be used by the research teams working in the laboratory. Additionally, a four-pass amplifier has been designed in-house to amplify 10 Hz repetition rate output pulses from two-pass Avesta amplifier up to 250 millijoules energy. The pump laser energy for the regenerative amplifier and the two-pass amplifier is delivered by a 532 nanometers nanosecond quantum laser or Saga laser, which is also used in the first amplification stage of the HPLS. Prior to using the laser pulse, the pulse is fully characterized by autocorrelators such as the Tundra system, spectral phase and spectral intensity detection systems such as the INSIDE, the SPIDER and other metrology systems available in the laboratory. After the compressor, the chirp pulse amplification laser output pulses have the energy of 9.4 millijoules 
an energy stability of 2% RMS and a repetition rate of 10 Hz. The measured autocorrelation curve has the full width half maximum of 76 femtoseconds, corresponding to a pulse duration of 53 femtoseconds, assuming Gaussian pulse shape. The spectral bandwidth is 29 nanometers at full width half maximum, and the central wavelength is preserved at 800 nanometers as produced by the oscillator. The scientists at LIMP are consistently working on upgrading the two 10 petawatt laser systems. The setups are built on need, and the outcomes of these research projects are often used to improve the HPLS or other systems at LIMP. Using the laser beam produced by the Avesta, the scientists in the lab are looking into the possibility of using thin film compression techniques to enable nuclear photonics, nonlinear quantum electrodynamics, and quantum chromodynamics laser driven physics. A comprehensive study of new plastic materials was performed for the first time. These are characterized in terms of optical nonlinearities, dispersion, transmission, wavefront distortion, and surface roughness. A long working distance imaging system, also known as LWDIS, was designed in-house and manufactured to efficiently monitor and diagnose, in real time, the intensity pattern in the interaction area of a laser beam with a target. Another advantage of the LWDIS is the ability to qualify the focal spot in high-power laser systems by avoiding the insertion of optical components in the laser focal plane. This is achieved while using an 8-inch aperture spherical mirror to gather the light and the microscope objective to further magnify the image and transfer it on a CCD detector plane. A 6-inch diameter beam splitter with a transmitted wavefront of lambda over 20 is used to redirect the light reflected from the spherical mirror to the microscope objective and to attenuate the incoming light. Here is one of the metrology instruments mentioned earlier, the Tundra, built by Ultrafast Innovations. Tundra is a high-dynamic range autocorrelator used for pulse characterization, which works on the basic principle of overlapping a pulse with a replica of itself in a non-linear process, in order to produce a sum frequency signal in such a way that each photon in the upconverted light is generated by the addition of one photon of each of the two pulses. The research teams interested in using our facility or collaborating with our scientists are provided with multiple optical tables and optical boards, wide range of optics and optomechanical equipment, high-end optical instruments and all auxiliary electronic devices such as computers, oscilloscopes, power supplies, delay pulse generators, multimeters and so on. A real-time, closed feedback loop adaptive optics setup has been developed for optical wavefront qualification. This system allows a dynamic wavefront correction associated to the optical components for high-peak ultra-short femtosecond laser systems. The adaptive optics setup consists in a shock Harman wavefront sensor for measuring optical wavefront deviations, a deformable mirror that changes its shape in order to modify a distorted optical wavefront, a real-time closed control software to calculate the corresponding shape that the deformable mirror must assume in order to compensate the wavefront distortions, and a second Shack Harman wavefront sensor that provides wavefront measuring capabilities for approximately 10 mm and 50 mm respectively laser beam diameter. The HPLS technical personnel is fully trained prior to joining the operation team of the high-power laser system. 
Our engineers and technicians spend many hours in the lab ensuring that the optical trains are properly aligned, the subsystems are working in the given parameter ranges, and the users benefit from the highest capabilities the Elion Peak Center can provide. The faculty responsible with the training has extensive experience in the field and collaborates with international and national centers in the area of optics, physics, chemistry, and engineering in general. A series of courses are offered within the optics lab. The topics covered are introductory and advanced optics, lasers, instrument-specific or system-specific, such as high-power laser system, or laser beam transport system. For more information and access to these courses, please visit the Optics Lab site. Among the multiple experiments conducted in the lab, it is worth mentioning the frustrated total internal reflection. In this experiment, two glass prisms are brought in close proximity. The evanescent field from the total internal reflection in one prism is used to obtain a beam with an irradiance tunable over 110 decibels, with potential applications from medicine to materials processing or simply beam attenuation. Automated control of optical elements in the optical train of any system is of major importance when high powers are involved and human interaction should be minimized as much as possible. Additionally, the experiments with high power laser systems require a good stability of the laser beam. Considering this, the laboratory engineers have developed a method for controlling the four spatial degrees of freedom for collimated beams by manufacturing two motorized kinematical mounts and using a single camera coupled to microcontrollers. Thank you for watching this video and we hope it made you curious enough to visit us in the near future.